Hey guys, and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shop, where everything's made up and the instructions don't matter. That's right, just like the added insurance on a rental car. Eh, well, that one might actually be worth it. <laughs> Today, we are going over soldering. If you guys have ever attempted to put two wires together, I know there are a million different ways to skin that cat. But by far, by leaps and bounds, the best way to terminate two wires together is to solder. And just like sweat and pipes, there is a real art form and a, a knack to get to doing this properly. So stick around and let's put these things together. So you guys can see here that I got a pretty slick setup with this digital microscope, which by the way, I have reviewed. And if you want to see that video, check it out right up here after this one, of course. Now, obviously you don't need this setup to do this and more often than not, you're not going to do it or it wouldn't be practical anyway. I just think that for like bench applications and what I'm doing right here, this is awesome. You know, uh, the old peepers aren't what they used to be and this nice LCD display Man, it, this just really makes everything so much nicer. And it's illuminated and everything. It just, it's a really nice setup. But let's get into it. Well, first things first here. Take your wires in question and strip off a decent amount. I would say about an inch or so. Yeah, between three quarters and an inch. Once you get the insulation off, go ahead and twist them together. Make sure everything's nice and tidy. This is what we're looking for. Do the same thing on the other one that we're trying to put together. Go ahead and twist those strands together. And the next part here, in order to make a good mechanical lock before we make the actual solder joint, the way that I choose to do this, cross them together like this with about a quarter inch in between the cross and where the insulation starts. And then simply wrap them together in alternating directions. So if you do this correctly, your twist should remain with inside that insulation there. So you have a good mechanical lock, like this would not be good enough on its own. Yes, you could just cover this with heat shrink and get by, but this will pull apart if you start yanking on it. That's where the solder comes in. So let's rig this up and do that. So guys, I got everything fixtured in here, and like I said before, I mean, this is nicer just for use, but also it makes it really crisp and clear for you guys to see what's going on. So you can see me physically doing it, and you can see what I'm focusing on at the same time. So my weapon of choice for doing this particular job is the Weller 8200. This thing is an absolute beast. Like, I'm sure that you guys have used regular soldering pens and stuff before. That's fine and dandy for little stuff, but... Honestly, if you're doing stuff like this, you're probably not patient enough to let that thing heat up. And honestly, it, it, I don't know. I just strongly prefer these things. You squeeze the trigger, and this thing gets hotter than the surface of the sun in about three seconds. So let's plug this thing in and give it a go. Well, before we do that, also, get you a spool of electrical solder. This just happens to be a spool of Radio Shack 6040 Rosin Core electrical solder. Yeah. I said Radio Shack. You can tell this thing has been around for a while. But uh, man, do I miss that place. Can I get an amen? So like I said in the beginning, this is super similar to like sweating pipe. The way that this works is that you heat up the joint with the soldering iron or in the case of pipe, the torch. And then the solder will follow the heat. This wants to flow to the hottest place in that joint. So I treat this very similar to like sweating pipe. Pull out a length and bend an end onto it. That way you can just hold the roll like this and get to where you need to go and still have a lot of egress here to see what you're doing. Now once we have everything set up here, going to let our iron heat up. You see there, tin the tip of the iron. We're going to put a little bit on the top of the joint. Now that's not complete. We want to heat up the bottom side and suck that solder all the way through those strands. And check that out, man. That's quite literally it. 
I mean, there are some cases where you're going to struggle with it more than that. But this is an absolutely perfect, impervious electrical joint. I mean, it's not as good as just a solid piece of wire going across here. But for repairs and connections, Bob's your uncle. This is as best you're ever going to get. Let's go ahead and finish this thing up. Now the very last step to finishing this thing and having a professional grade solder joint is heat shrink tubing. This particular one has like the glue inside. You guys will see it ooze out once it heats up, but this stuff is absolutely great. And this is totally paramount to finishing this joint correctly. So let's unfixture this thing and hook it up. So you simply take your heat shrink here, shove it over the open end of the wire, or if this is something that you don't have an exposed end of the wire. Make sure you install this first because this is just like flaring a brake line. If you forget to put the nut on before you flare, same situation. If you forget to put the heat shrink on before you solder, you're screwed. You need to cut it out or melt it and start over again. So just make sure you pay mind to your application and do it properly. Now, like I've said before, there are a million ways to skin a cat here. You can use a heat gun if you're in a sensitive area where you can't use an open flame. But more often than not, I choose to use this little butane torch here. And this is more than effective for what we're getting at. You just need to make sure that you have an appropriate distance away from your heat shrink so you don't just burn it. And keep the flame moving so it just takes the heat and not the actual flame. Simply turn on the gas, spark this old girl up. Keep her moving. It's like we're making a flambe here, or whatever that is. I don't even know. But you see how I'm moving? You don't want to stay in one spot too long and melt this stuff. And there you go, fellas. That is the best solder joint that you could possibly hope to get. Now, just for kicks here, and to prove the point that this is a good, solid solder joint, Go ahead and hook up my meter. Well, obviously you're not going to have to do this if you're actually repairing a wire, but for the sake of the demonstration here, we're going to ohm this thing out just to see how good this joint is. So, set up a meter to ohms. Whenever we put it together, we get an audible tone from the meter and it shows up our resistance. So right there we have that zero it's absolutely perfect so we know the meter's working right and we shouldn't get any interference in the reading that way we'll hook up the two ends of the wire that we just soldered look at that negligible almost nothing look it's that zero it's perfect this is the best solder joint that you could possibly hope to get together so guys i know this was quick and dirty but honestly stuff like this should be but knowing how to do it properly is absolutely paramount. Like I said, this will take a minute to get the hang of because there is kind of a technique to it. Like you need to understand the materials that you're working with, the different properties, the heat, and just controlling where things go. But once you do get the hang of it, man, this is absolutely life-changing. Take those Wagos and those wire nuts, throw them out the window. You're better than that now. Solder it, make a solid, permanent connection. And whenever you do something like this, especially on like, outside stuff like uh, trailers or cars or ATVs or whatever. This is how you repair wiring for stuff that's going to be in a gnarly harsh environment because this will not be a problem just like wrapping two ends together with electrical tape. Now like I said before I'll link all of this stuff and down in the description if you're interested in getting a setup like this for yourself but I promise this is not that difficult. Get some junk wire, practice on the weekend. I promise you will get the hang of this and it is absolutely life-changing once you do. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and you can gain a new life skill and we will see you next time.